they're not putting out a lot of them. Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a thriller, mystery, action film from 2018, titled The Commuter. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Every day, Michael McCauley goes through the same routine before heading to his daily commute. He spends time with his wife Karen and son Danny, helping his son with his literature assignments before his wife gives him a lift. Can On the way, not, they right. talk about tuition expenses and hope they can manage the payments. She drops him off at the train station to catch the train to work. This routine has been repeated for 10 years. Mike frequently converses with other regular commuters like Walt. Mike works as a life insurance salesman. But on this particular day, Mike's boss calls him into his office to tell him that he is being laid off after 10 years. Despite his arguments that he has two mortgages, his son is going to college, and he has five years until retirement, Mike is fired. Everything becomes muffled for him, he and Karen are living hand to mouth and he does not know what to do next. Mike gets a call from Karen telling him about the upcoming payments and asking him how his day went. He avoids telling her about his layoff. He visits a bar where he meets his longtime friend, Officer Alex Murphy, who was also Mike's former partner during his time as a detective. As they chat, TV runs a report about a city planner who allegedly threw himself to his death a few nights earlier. Mike confesses to Alex that he has not told Karen about him being fired yet. Then they find out that a former colleague they don't like, Dave Hawthorne, is now a captain. Before leaving Alex and Mike share their quote, doing the right thing will get you killed and there is no such thing as being noble. Uh, uh, At the station there is a bag check and he notices a man on the phone saying he can't do it. In the meantime one of the regular commuters complains about the situation. Before he gets on a man runs into him. As if the situation couldn't get any worse, inside he notices his phone is gone. A man walks by and talks on the phone about something big happening tonight. A Hispanic woman is in distress. In one of the cars, the AC is off. Girl is arguing with a boy who is trying to hit that. A well-dressed man is awfully loud, bragging about his expensive suit and all. When a girl asks him to keep it down, he says her 99 cent perfume bothers him and she changes seats. Mike sits down and is joined by a woman, Joanna. After a brief, friendly conversation, Joanna tells Mike that there is a compartment on the train with $25,000 and another $75,000 in cash. She tells him he can have it as long as he helps find someone on the train who doesn't belong here. He has time until they reach the last stop in Cold Spring. She indicates that the person is carrying a bag with something in it that he or she stole and goes by the name friend. Before departing, Joanna implies that she knows Mike is a former cop and that he should not tell anyone what he just heard. Mike is taken aback. He looks in the designated compartment and finds the money. He thinks about leaving the train with the 25 grand. A young woman stops him and tries to claim the money, but Mike decides to keep it for himself. The woman then hands Mike an envelope and says it's a warning. He opens the envelope and finds Karen's wedding ring. Having lost his own phone, Mike borrows the phone of another commuter, Tony. Mike finds Walt and asks him for his paper. He writes him a note to call the police as his family is in danger while a man stares at him from behind. He leaves him the paper and tries to call Karen, but cannot reach her. He tries Alex and gets the same result, but leaves a message. As Walt leaves the train, on, Mike sees a man who had seen earlier down. boarding the train rush in with a bag. Joanna calls Mike, drawing his attention out the window. He sees Walt about to cross the street to talk to the cops, but someone working with Joanna pushes Walt into the path of a bus, killing him. She warns Mike that this is exactly what will happen if he tries to make a run for it. She instructs Mike to find print in a bag they are holding, and to put a tracking device on the bag they slipped in his pocket. First, Mike gives the phone back to Tony and checks what zone Cold Spring is in, it's zone 7. He looks at the other passenger destinations, he's looking for a stamp on number 7. He marks all the people, a man in a red shirt, a vacant seat, a Hispanic woman, an African American man, a girl with colored hair, and the stockbroker. Mike approaches the stockbroker because he has never seen him on the train before, even though his ticket has zone 7 marked on it, he is confused as to why Mike thinks he is going to Cold Springs and also calls him poor and that he should mind his own business. <laughs> Mike gives him the middle finger and his next attention is on the girl. He starts a conversation with her, but she excuses herself. He follows her and grabs her bag. She's carrying fake IDs for her boyfriend. Mike notices a sign, which gives him an idea. He approaches a conductor and points out a few people who seem suspicious to him. He suggests searching the bags of everyone going to Cold Spring. The conductor approaches the Hispanic woman and wants to check her bag under the pretense of a security check. A scuffle ensues and Mike once again notices the tattooed man from the first stop, who is also headed to Cold Springs. 
Mike follows the tattooed man, who attacks him in the next car for following him. When Mike mentions Prin, he becomes suspicious and the two continue to fight until Mike lets him win so he can slip in the tracker. When he thinks the job is done, he finally allows himself a breather. Tony receives a call and he quickly figures out that the call is for him. He answers it and it's Alex. Alex assures him that he sent some agents to his house to check on his family. Mike tells him the whole story about Prin, the 100 grand and Waltz and that his family is being threatened. Alex mentions that a witness using Prin's name claims to have seen two men throw a city official to his death. This makes Mike realize that Prin is going to be killed and that he is being set up. As the train enters a tunnel, the call is interrupted. Two agents are waiting for the witness at Cold Springs. They mention 20 minutes until the arrival of the train. As Mike continues to walk between cars, people notice him and get nervous. He opens the bag the tattooed man had in the empty car, it's filled with his belongings and a missing gun. He hears a phone ring and discovers the body of a tattooed man wearing a badge that reveals he was an FBI agent. Mike answers the phone, it's Joanna. She accuses him of identifying the wrong person and being responsible for another man's death. He asks about his family's well-being and she assures him that everything will be okay as long as he does his part. Joanna activates the microphone on Karen's phone and he listens as a man comes over to their house and says he is there on behalf of Mike. Joanna interrupts the transmission and tells him not to leave the train and not to get caught. The train is stopped for an investigation, some passengers have warned the authorities about Mike's suspicious activities on the train. Mike hides with the body while the police clear the cars. He tries to open the door but cannot, so he crawls down, only for the train to start moving, he still manages to jump down and roll between the wheels. He manages to jump back on the train, but his bag gets stuck. When he pulls it back, all the money flies out except for a hundred. Joanna calls again, it's two yeah, more stops until Cold Springs, he is desperate. Mike turns off the AC on all cars except the last one. All passengers move to the last car. Mike meets with the red shirt and Tony for a card game. He asks the red shirt why he is on the train and is promptly rebuffed. He then raises his voice and talks throughout the car about being fired and not having the heart to tell his wife. He then talks about a hypothetical scenario of a passenger who does not belong on the train carrying a bag and about the reward, the same scenario Joanna told him. When asked by Tony what he would do, he would put all the people still on the train Techno in one car and suggest that very scenario. Tony corrects himself and asks if he would take the money, to which Mike admits that he already did. He suspects that five commuters might be Prin, Bro, since he's never seen him on man, the train before. Him, After realizing that the man playing cards with Tony is a monthly commuter, Mike follows a guitarist, Oliver, into the empty car. Oliver turns out not to be Prin, but an assassin working with Joanna, sent to kill Prin. Mike fights him for a while until they break a window. Oliver tries to push Mike out, but Mike gets the upper hand and throws Oliver out. Joanna calls him and tells him to take the gun, it's either Prin or his family. The man in the fancy suit leaves one stop before Cold Springs. That leaves two suspects, but he's already crossed off the girl with the colorful hair. He sits down across from the Hispanic woman, Eva, who keeps getting messages on her phone. He asks her why she's going to Cold Springs, and she brushes him off. He Liam takes her Neeson phone, looks believing like she is contacting Joanna, out. and holds her at gunpoint to get her to tell the truth. Terrified, Eva admits she had a fight with her boyfriend and tried to make up with him. Mike apologizes after realizing she is telling the truth. Slowly, Mike realizes that Prin isn't anyone he previously suspected. He recalls a young woman changing seats on the way to Cold Spring after sitting next to an obnoxious passenger. He approaches her. She does not realize what's happening because she's been listening to music the whole time. The girl's name is Sophia. Prin comes from her reading of the Scarlet Letter and its protagonist, Hester Prin. Like Michaela, Joanna calls wrong. him again, he refuses to kill her or give her up. Joanna tells him that she it's works Louis for Michaela. very powerful people, and with him continuing to decline, she declares that now everyone will die. Mike asks one of the conductors, Sam, to stop the train if he wants to survive. He pulls the brake, but the brakes explode and the train continues on, passing the two FBI agents at Cold Spring. The engineer is dead from the blow and there is no way to stop the train. They try to unhinge their car from the rest of the train. XQC Mike, L. with Sam's help, manages to free the car, but it is still attached by a chain. Mike manages to jump onto the other car, Sam grabs an axe and jumps to Mike. As they try to free the chain, the train begins to derail and the front section crashes One and goes chain for the whole train? At that moment, they release the chain and Mike is thrown onto the last car, leaving Sam in the crashing cars. Red Shirt pulls Mike in, as their car also derails, and comes to a screeching, bumpy halt on the edge of a train yard. People are panicking and trying to get out. 
Mike gets their attention by firing his gun, he tells them it's not over yet and orders everyone to grab a newspaper and spray the windows with water to cover them. After everyone calms down, Mike asks Sophia what she might have that the villains want. She pulls out some sort of flash drive that has information on it that the city planner, a friend of Sophia's, had known. Sophia also mentions that she couldn't go to the police because the killers were cops. She admits to seeing one of them and also that he said something about being noble. Noble? Mike asks. Sophia mentions that the only person she told about it is Agent Garcia. The police then arrive outside, believing that Mike has taken the passengers hostage. His former colleague Dave is there. Over the loudspeaker, he tells him to surrender while Mike calms everyone down. Alex shows up Fish and died. tries to calm Mike Doc down. Died. Mike Horse helps a large died. group of passengers Train go derailed. out, with a few remaining. Orange juice After spilled. getting rid of the wire, Dave asks him to follow the blue tagged individual on the train. Mike tries to get Alex to tell him what he might know about the conspiracy. Alex mentions the phrase there's no such thing as noble, which is something Sophie said earlier, cluing Mike to Alex's involvement. He initially denies it, but later admits setting him up, telling Mike that he knew he needed the money. Alex still suggests he surrender if he wants to see his family alive again, Mike gives up his gun. Alex tells Mike that he got his family to worry about as well. He goes looking for Prin. Mike doesn't give her up. When Sophia tries to reveal herself, other passengers start saying they are Prin as well. Mike and Alex then fight while the cops outside try to get a clear shot at Mike. Mike manages to take Alex's tracking device and fool the police. When Alex draws his gun, Dave orders the snipers to take the shot, killing him and the SWAT team comes in. Agent Garcia walks in and tells Mike that his family is safe and that they arrested three men outside his house. Sophia meets with FBI agents and makes a witness statement. The other passengers consider Mike a hero. He is reunited with his family, gives his wife back her ring, and then talks to Dave, who says they will investigate Alex and his possible accomplices. Dave also suggests inviting Mike back to his old job as a detective. Sometime later, Michael is back on the train yeah, and manages Mike's to find up. Joanna. Although she pretends not to know him. He suspects that she made sure he was fired, and that they put Sophie on the train with him for a reason and that she tricked him and Alex. When she asks him how he thinks things will turn out, Michael just pulls out his detective badge. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. What? Subscribe if you'd like. Okay, this is one of those movies that isn't very like um for this for this for this concept of a movie cap, right? It's too much.